Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Welcome to this lesson on summary completion questions. These are not the most common type of listening question, but they do sometimes come up, so you need to understand them in case you get one. The lesson includes sample questions, strategy and tips, a practice question, the answers, and some help with vocabulary. We'll start with a definition of a summary, in case you're unsure of the meaning of the word. A summary is a short, clear description that gives the main facts or ideas about something. For summary completion questions, you'll be given a summary of the recording. And the recording will typically be a monologue on an academic subject, such as a lecture on the Amazon rainforest or the pyramids of Giza. There will be words missing from the summary, which you must fill in. This type of question is most likely to come up in section 4, the most challenging part of the test. Here are two summary completion questions to show you what they look like. This first one is from a past test paper. Pause the video if you want a few moments to study it. This second question has been created specifically to teach you the strategy for answering this sort of question and to illustrate some tips. We'll be using it for some test practice after we've looked at the strategy and tips. Again, pause the video if you want to read through it. You'll have a short time to prepare before the speaker begins talking. Use this time to familiarise yourself with the question and to focus your mind on what you need to listen out for. First, read the instructions carefully, paying particular attention to how many words you're allowed to write for the answer as this does vary. The instructions for our sample questions state that you must write only one word for each answer. The instructions for the caveman diet question, on the other hand, state that you must write no more than two words for each answer. If you write more than the number of words required, your answer will be marked incorrect, even if the information you give is correct. Next, look for a title. Not every question will have one, but if there is one, it will tell you the context of the question. This will help you to understand the question and give you a big clue as to what sort of information will be contained in the recording. Both our sample questions have titles. They are Origins of the Caveman Diet and Sydney Opera House. The answers will come in the same order in the recording as they're listed in the question. So, for this question, you'll hear answer 32 first, then answer 33, and so on. This makes it easier to pick out the answers than if they were in a random order. The next task is to try to predict what the answers might be. This will focus your mind on what to listen out for in the recording. Occasionally, you'll be able to predict the actual word, but mostly it's one or more of these things that you'll be able to determine. The type of information required, for example, the name of a person, a place name, a number or a date. Or the type of word required, such as a noun, an adjective or a verb. Any clues you can get will help you to understand the audio and identify the information needed for the answers. Have a go at predicting some of the answers in our sentence completion practice question. There are five answers to fill in. 32 to 36. Pause the video to do this, then have a look at my predictions on the next slide. Here are my predictions. Answer 32 will be a noun. Answer 33, a date. Answer 34, a place name. Answer 35, an adjective. And answer 36, a number. You can see that just a few seconds spent doing this can give you a lot of information about what you need to listen for in the recording. This will greatly improve your chances of identifying the correct answers. Synonyms and paraphrasing will be used extensively in the recording, so you will not only be listening for the exact words that are in the summary, but also different words and phrases that have the same meaning. In your preparation time, scan the summary and underline words that are likely to be replaced by synonyms. 
These will be words immediately before and possibly straight after the missing word or words. Then, quickly think of words that might be used instead. I've underlined some important key words in our practice question. Can you think of some synonyms for them? Pause the video and try this now. We'll look at the synonyms and paraphrasing that have been used in this question when we review the answers. There are six types of vocabulary that can cause particular problems for students in the listening test and some of them will definitely be present in summary completion questions. The six types are time, numbers, prices, dates, letters and addresses. You must be able to recognise them in speech and to write them correctly in our answers. I've written a whole lesson on this topic, including eight listening exercises to help you recognise and learn these types of vocabulary. I've put a link to it in the notes below this video. The examiners may try and catch you out with distractors. A distractor is a word or a phrase that changes or corrects the original piece of information given. So, you may be given an answer and then have it taken away again. Here are two sample sentences containing distractors. I've highlighted the relevant words. The venue is most famous for its operatic performances, but pop concerts are equally as popular today. The cost to build Sydney Opera House was estimated at $7 million. However, the final bill came to $102 million and it was largely paid for by a state lottery. The use of but and however are particularly common distractors, but there are many different words and phrases that can be used to change or correct a piece of information, so be alert for them. My final tip is to never leave a blank space on the answer sheet. If you miss an answer, take an educated guess. This gives you at least some chance of getting it right. Don't stress about a missed answer or it will affect your ability to answer the next set of questions. Just make your choice and move on. It's now time for you to practice using this strategy on our sample question. Here it is again. The script I'm going to read out is from an item about Sydney Opera House in a radio broadcast. Listen to this recording and answer the question. When you've completed the practice activity, we'll go through the answers one at a time. The Sydney Opera House is situated on Benelong Point, on the south side of the harbour, just east of Sydney Harbour Bridge. Its unique roof design, which looks like a series of gleaming white sails, make it one of the most photographed buildings in the world. The idea for a building for opera, concerts, dance productions, as well as other dramatic presentations, was conceived in 1956, when the state government sponsored an international competition for the design. This was won by Danish architect Jorn Utzon. Construction began in 1959, but it was 14 years later, in 1973, that it was completed. The roof has over a million tiles, made in Sweden, covering its surface. As evening falls, these are illuminated to create a colourful display. The largest venue, the 2,679-seat concert hall, is host to symphony concerts, choir performances and popular music shows. Opera and dance performances, including ballet, take place in the Opera Theatre, which seats just over 1,500. There are also three theatres of different sizes and configurations for stage plays, film screenings and smaller musical events and exhibitions. Remarkably, in excess of 40 performances take place each week. As one of Australia's top tourist attractions, Sydney Opera House is visited by over 8 million people annually. Here are the correct answers. Pause the video and check them against your own. Then we'll go through them one at a time and examine the language that makes them correct. Answer 32 is sales. Here's a summary sentence followed by the section of the recording the answer appears in. Sydney Opera House is famous for its roofs architecture resembling 
and the recording. Its unique roof design, which looks like a series of gleaming white sails, makes it one of the most photographed buildings in the world. And here are the synonyms that are being used. Roof's architecture for roof design and resembling for looks like. Answer 33 is 1973. And this is a summary sentence. The Opera House was designed by Jorn Utzon from Denmark and it was built between 1959 and... and the recording. This was won by Danish architect Jorn Utzon. Construction began in 1959, but it was 14 years later, in 1973, that it was completed. And this paraphrasing has been used. For built between, we have construction began and was completed. Answer 34 is Sweden. And here's a summary sentence. The roof is covered with more than one million roof tiles, which were manufactured in... And the recording. The roof has over a million tiles made in Sweden, covering its surface. And these synonyms have been used. More than for over and manufactured for made in. Sweden's a proper noun, so must start with a capital letter. If you're concerned that you'll forget to use capital letters when necessary, write all your answers for the listening test totally in capitals. Answer 35 is colourful. And here's a summary sentence. Every evening the roof is lit up in a something spectacle. And the recording. As evening falls, these are illuminated to create a colourful display. And these synonyms have been used. Lit up for illuminated and spectacle for display. And finally, answer 36, which is 40. The summary sentence is, more than something shows are staged there every week. And the recording. Remarkably, in excess of 40 performances take place each week. And here are the synonyms used. More than for in excess, shows for performances and our stage for take place. Take extra care with numbers, especially tens and teens. These sound very similar and are easily confused. For example, 40 and 14. I hope you found this lesson helpful. Now practice using this strategy with other summary completion questions from past papers. It's only with practice that your skills will improve and you'll get the score you need in your test. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in another lesson soon. Goodbye for now.